What's up everybody? I'm here at the beautiful Goshen Pass in Virginia to talk about rolling these bad boys. Some people like to call them space pods, some people like to call them whitewater canoes. Either way, I'll touch base on a couple pieces of gear I use before getting in the pool to break the roll down. I do want to mention the technique I will show works for me and I know may not work for everyone. My goal in making this video is to take the advanced skill apart enough for you to be able to use the pieces to build a reliable technique that works for you. For the pool session, I'll be using my Blackfly Ion. I added some hip pads to give myself more contact, not have to rely on my core all the time to move the boat. I also lock myself in pretty good with the foot pegs to have something to push against. Still able to exit if I need to, but being locked in like this helps me transfer all of my lower body movement to the boat so there's no wasted energy. Deck goods should be evenly distributed and secured. Make it easy for yourself and let the only thing shifting during the roll be water. N nose plugs and ear plugs are nice to have. Uh, nose plugs give me much more time underwater. Uh, and earplugs help me with strictly rolling practice, especially in the winter months. PFDs, helmets, throw bags, other gear are obviously necessary. Find the type of gear that works best for you to get down the river safely. So last thing before getting in the pool is my paddle. I have a 54 inch grass sticks. Uh, size wise for the paddle, I found for me being 5'9 with long arms, 54 works the best. I lean forward and use a cross deck a lot, um, so uh, the shorter paddle is easier to manage for my style of driving. It is a little bit less leverage than the 56 and 57s I've used, but I feel I can maneuver the shorter paddle around underwater better, especially if I'm trying to find the setup position and I'm far from it at the time. It's easy to cut through the water. Uh, I am also a rep for grass sticks, so if you're interested in checking them out, please do. I'll leave their website and a discount code in the description. Alright, so we're here at the pool. If there are pool sessions available in your area, it's a really helpful way to introduce yourself to rolling because it provides a neutral environment to practice the skill itself without having to worry about hazards in the wild. And it's a little warmer if you're practicing in the winter. We're going to work backwards and start with the end of the roll first. It helped me while learning to focus on one movement per roll session to not put pressure on myself to get it all right in a couple hours. Fatigue will set in when the movements are new, potentially leading to sloppy form being stored as muscle memory, which is not the goal. Having consistent, shorter practices focusing on really good form will encourage creating the correct muscle memory you can easily build on in the future. Starting with the lower body portion of the end of the roll, we're going to use our legs to really initiate the roll and carry that momentum until we're fully upright. The term stepping clicked with me more than hip snap. As with going upstairs, stepping engages the entire lower body, the focus being on the knees. You'll be driving the offside knee down and pulling the onside knee up and continuing until you're upright. Stepping is also used in surfing, right? If the boat is starting to lean upstream, you're driving your downstream knee down and pulling your upstream knee up to shift your boat to lean downstream. A strong step will help you with both surfing and rolling. Isolate each knee, driving down on your offside, then pulling up on your onside, then use both and use some force. Find those edges. Your lower body is strong and protected as long as you stay in the boat. So use all that power. In practice, I like to over-exaggerate to find a range of what works. Different situations can sometimes call for different degrees of a skill. Feel those different degrees that you're capable of in practice, so if you need to tap into it in the wild, you know it's there. The upper body is used in conjunction with the lower body for the actual roll. The upper body gives you that little extra oomph to get upright after the lower body starts flipping the boat. Key points of this setup that we'll call the sweep position are your T-grip arm bent between 45 and 90 degrees and close to your body, top of your helmet touching the paddle, chin tucked, elbows tucked, all while facing perpendicular from the boat. This position is where you are most vulnerable, so it's important to keep as much of your body protected as possible. Make yourself small by keeping both elbows and chin tucked and helmet on the paddle. 
All right, so putting this upper body position in the water. If you combine this with stepping and can roll up, cool. If you can't, that's cool too. Right now, we're just focusing on familiarity of the setup in the water. So once you're set up, hold the sweep position as you hit the water to face the bottom of the pool. Let the water settle and notice your surroundings. What do you feel? Are you in panic mode? Can you feel you're facing the bottom of the pool? Your helmet on the paddle? Your chin and elbows tucked? Can you feel the water moving around you? Move your upper body to relax in the position and tell yourself you're okay. This position is one of two anchor points for me. An anchor point for me is a position I feel comfortable in and confident the muscle memory is there. I'm able to think very clearly and can troubleshoot difficulties I'm experiencing, like having an unsuccessful roll attempt because I wasn't facing the bottom of the river or my head came off the paddle. I can reset at that anchor point without having to go through the entire setup again. This is how foundations are built, right? Mastering and grouping one set of skills together, mastering another set of skills, and then building an advanced skill with those smaller groups. From this sweep position in the water, as you initiate the lower body portion of the roll, your upper body will sweep forward through a low brace. The key here is to keep your head low and on the paddle until your head is over your boat to keep the momentum from your lower body stepping. Feel the brace motion. Going from the sweep position, push the paddle down with your head, sweep the paddle through the low brace, ending with stacked hands or a vertical paddle in an offensive forward stroke. Your upper body is basically untwisting from the sweep position and returning to its upright bow facing position. Combining the lower and upper body movements, simply put, step hard, push your upper body down on your paddle and untwist to have your head over the bow of the boat. If you'd like, do a couple steps with just your lower body in this position. Feel how much your boat rolls without using your upper body. I load up power through my lower body and keep it more rigid than my upper body during the roll, since your lower body is protected and foam can absorb impact from rocks. My upper body keeps the necessary form, but stays relatively loose to absorb any impacts from unanticipated rocks. Initiate stepping right before the sweep. It's just like boom, boom. Pushing down on the paddle with your upper body gives you that little bit of extra support as you're continuing to roll without using a lot of space in the water. The low brace to forward stroke motion happens when your head is over the boat. A forward stroke is a great offensive position to be in after a roll because chances are you won't be lined up perfectly for the next move. You may or may not be facing downstream or you're getting sucked back into the hole you flipped in. Either way, a forward stroke will start moving you into a different position to help regain your speed and control. All right, so that's the onside roll. That is where muscle memory is key because you'll use it for every roll, onside and offside. Continuing to work backwards, next is being completely upside down and tucked. Being completely upside down can be disorienting. So I did the same thing for this position that I did for the sweep position and got a feel for my surroundings. This tucked position is my main anchor point and a position I want to be super familiar with. I am grounded the most mentally here because my body is so well protected, which allows me to focus on assessing my current situation. Depending on where you are, you may not be able to roll right away and have to wait for a good opportunity. When a good opportunity does present itself, being ready and waiting to act on it immediately is beneficial. Since we'll end up in the sweep position, start with that. T-grip arm between 45 and 90 degrees next to your body, chin tucked, head on paddle, then rotate your wrist and lay your upper body down on the center of the deck. I prefer the paddle crossing the deck versus to one side to let the weight be more evenly distributed to let the boat settle completely upside down. To transition from the tucked position to the sweep, peel off the deck using your T-grip as a pivot point to face the bottom of the pool. Remember to keep everything tucked and together as you're coming off the deck. 
Step with your lower body, sweep your paddle forward to finish the roll. For a complete roll, tuck and roll in from the offside. When you find the upside down tuck position, peel off the deck to face the bottom of the pool and finish the roll. Once you're comfortable with the basic roll from both sides, bust as many variations out as possible. Apply these skills in the wild to add another level to the skill. Start small, staying focused on your surroundings and your form, dialing in the muscle memory through different scenarios, and build from there. So whether you're just starting out or your role isn't as bomb proof as you'd like, it helps to learn from others and their experiences in addition to your own. Exposing yourself to different sources provides you with options to pick and choose what works best for you and your goals. Because rolling is a multi-step process, it is more difficult to learn than other skills in canoeing. It involves not only learning the skill, but also being able to apply it in different situations which takes it to a whole nother level. But like any skill in life that seems too overwhelming, impossible, difficult, whatever you wanna call it, when you step back from trying to figure it all out in the moment, you'll find it's just made up of a lot of small pieces that are actually really manageable to work on individually. Reliably executing those small pieces separately makes it way easier to build a solid foundation where you'll be able to adapt the bigger skill to work in as many situations as possible. As you're learning and pushing your boundaries, you'll be exposing yourself to those new and sometimes chaotic moments. Pieces of the process you already know and are muscle memory, these are obviously your strengths and have helped you get where you are and set your current baseline. With any new endeavor though, as you progress, weaknesses, or what I like to instead call learning opportunities, will start to surface. It's just a sign you reached your current limit. Congratulations! You now have a choice. Keep the limit where it is or push past it. When time and effort are invested in breaking down a perceived weakness to change it, eventually you'll start to see the situation different. And then what do you know? It'll start to grow into his strength because you understand it more. A beautiful thing I've seen with this sport is the learning never really stops. There are too many layers to explore in a single lifetime. So be sure to give yourself the time and patience when you navigate the learning curves of unfamiliar things you want to explore. You'll look back one day and be like, dang man, I can't believe I thought that seemed impossible for me to do. And in my opinion, that feeling is one of life's greatest joys. So that's my spiel about not getting discouraged when things don't click right away. Keep pushing to find the right path leading towards your goals and you'll get there. So I hope y'all were able to gain something from this walkthrough, even if it's I don't wanna do it that way. <laughs> However you figure yours out, a reliable role is definitely a game changer in the sport. Please challenge yourself safely though, by being honest about your current abilities and boat with others you trust have your best interests in mind. It is a solo team sport that requires everyone's efforts on the water. So keep practicing those foundational skills, celebrate those lovely learning opportunities that pop up as you progress, and most importantly, enjoy the journey to your goals in the sport. Stay safe out there and happy boating.